Welcome everyone. Welcome to Skylight Designs. My name is Sebastian Nado. In this video, I wanted to show you my SEO process um, for content optimization. So before I start, I know SEO can be a topic where it seems like it's the, I don't know, like the, um, the grease or the uh, bacon and eggs, or I'm not sure how you want to put it, but it's kind of a greasy topic in web design or web development where it's, um, it's something that you may get a lot of emails about, like people offering you SEO services, and you're wondering, is this really, does this have, like, what is it all about, basically, right? Um, so really, the practice of SEO is really, in my opinion, in my um, in my view, it's, it's not all about ranking. It's really SEO holistically is about um, following best practices, really. It's about making sure that your website is accessible, that you're, you're following good practices and code, you're, you're making sure um, you have all, ta all text, making your website accessible. Also, um, making sure that your site can be easily indexed by Google. So that in of itself won't rank you, but it's, it's a good practice, right? You're making it easier for search engines, not just Google, but Bing and other search engines to um, to index your website properly and to display the content of your website in the most optimal way. I think that's what S that in of itself, that's what SEO is as a whole is to, is to fully optimize the way your content is being presented. Now with that comes ranking because the more on page SEO that you do on page, uh, on page SEO referring to what, what you do on your actual website itself. Um, if you do things, uh, if you structure things optimally, uh, you could enhance your search rankings in the process. And then there's also strategies you could use to leverage uh, the algorithm of, of search engines to make sure that you have relevancy in your content so that you could rank higher. Um, just to show you that I've I had some success ranking. Oh, I have to log in. I uh, I did log in before, but my session ended, so I'm just gonna have to log in again. So I did have some success ranking on Google. As you can see, um, these are the keywords. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see. These are the keywords that I'm ranking for. And, and as you can see, it has some search volume. I'm relatively early in my SEO journey, but you can see that even with Ottawa Web Design Development Services, which has 880 search volume, I'm ranked ninth, but for something more simple like WordPress website Ottawa. It has a search volume of 10, I'm ranked six. Uh, WordPress developer Ottawa, I'm ranked fourth. It has a search volume of 20. Um, Scala Design or Scala Designs has more search volume, but it, it doesn't follow the user's intent. So that's not that relevant. Um, here you can see Ottawa website design development. I'm just showing you this so that I, I wanna show you proof that um, you know, like it's through these metrics, um, you can see that I am ranking a little bit for some search terms. So um, hopefully you can trust what I'm saying. And like if I type in WordPress developer Ottawa, for instance, which WordPress is a content management system that powers up about, I believe over maybe about 40% or over right now of the internet. If you type in WordPress developer Ottawa, I am ranked on the first page of Google in Ottawa, um, you know, right below Indeed, which Indeed is a very big website, as you know, and I'm even ranking above Upwork. So that's without a lot of backlinks. I didn't do a, I didn't do a lot of backlinking linking, but I I'm really good at on-page SEO, so I really wanted to show you what I do in my process. So. If I type in something, for example, other search terms like craft or even web design Ottawa, I could show you web design Ottawa. Um, this is a very, this is quite competitive because there's a lot of people ranking for this. Um, 
if you go to the second page of Google, I'm ranked right here. Ottawa Web Design Development. I'm on the second page of Google. Um, for things that are easier to rank for, such as uh, Craft, CMS, Ottawa, I'm ranked number one in Ottawa for Craft CMS, but that's much easier to rank for. Um, that This is based on keyword difficulty, and I will get that in, in, into a moment because certain phrases uh, that you put into the search engine, depending on what the keyword difficulty is, you could be ranked higher or lower based on how much, how optimized your content is and how how many backlinks are driving to that page and what your overall domain authority is. So if I click on this page, like this is the first result. This is, this is Skylight Designs, as you can see. This is our website. And uh, on the about page, it's uh, I'm, I'm going to update this photo of myself because I find I'm, I'm quite serious. I'm actually a very friendly person, so I look a bit serious in this photo. But, um, you know, this is my website. So, um, yeah, I just want to show you that, like, I am ranked for a few things in Ottawa. And these are all the, the keywords metrics that I'm ranked for. So well, now that we got that out of the way, um, I just want to show you that um, this is my process. So um, so the first thing I do, let's say, like let's say I want to write an article about uh, startups, you know, like startups uh, and how it relates to web development. So if I look at here, I have, there's something I'm working on right now, which actually this was an article I've written a while ago, but I can show you how I arrived at that conclusion. So let's say I'm thinking of creating an article for startups, you know, like I'm just going to type in startups um, or just startups. This is what's referred to as a seed keyword. Now, this is called the keyword tool, and it's basically an auto Google autocomplete suggestion tool that shows you what kind of autocomplete suggestions are, are showing up on Google. Essentially, you could get a glimpse of what people are searching for on Google using this tool. You can get a sense of what people are actually typing in on Google and what they're looking for. So if I just type in the word startups, and I just, you could even do this for YouTube or Google or anything you would like. Um, I'm just gonna go in Canada here. Instead of globally, I'm just gonna search for Canada and English, and I'm just gonna click uh, search and it's going to verify that I'm human, of course. Um, but these are like, the, I'm using the free version of this tool, but basically here you can see that these are all the, uh, related search terms that people are typing in for startups. And the process that you would go through is eventually is eventually just, you could, you could select some of these that you want to pick, you know, you could select all of them if you want. Um, I'm just going to pick a few, um, but I'm going to type in startups web design, something a bit more specific, and see what shows up. Web design for startups. Okay, so that's one of the search terms that we have here, web design for startups. Funny enough, that's actually what we're going to be exactly talking about, web design for startups. But there's also web design companies for startups. You can also click that, startups web design. Basically, you want to, you could actually click all of these, you know, just to save time. You could just select all of them because we could do a bulk search where we don't have to uh, click one by one and guess what the, what the, um, what the keyword difficulty is. So we're just going to copy that to the, to the clipboard. And then now we're going to go back to key search and we're going to go do some keyword research. So basically what you want to do is you would like to, you you could use a tool called key search this is a really good key, keyword research tool it's called key search and if you go to keyword research and you go to canada because we're located in canada and then we want to make sure that we import keyword list we can just control control v here and probably get rid of some of these that are not that relevant so seven devs we can get rid of eight web design we can we can get rid of here five u website i'm not sure what that's all about startup four i'm not sure what that's about uh 3d website oh people are looking for 3d websites now that's good i didn't know that 
I, I kind of figured that would happen, but it's good to see. Uh, to web design ink, we can probably get rid of this. So we're just going to filter out like some of the ones that are not that relevant. Um, v web, bra, I'm not sure what that's all about. Web B B Z Z one digital studio. We can get rid of that. Um, get rid of all these. Now we can get rid of the, the actual locations because these are not relevant to what we are looking for. So I'm just going to filter some of these out. Um, filter some of these out. Our website design. I'm not sure what that's about. Z design studio. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, Yeah, so I'm just I'm just going to go through this quickly. Maybe I could edit this video if it's a bit too long, but just bear with me. Um, startup web development Reddit. Okay, that seems good. Tech design, tech startups Waterloo. We could get rid of that. Juno web development. We don't need that. I okay, that's fine. Okay. So basically, you would just filter out some of the not relevant search terms. Yeah, we don't need this. Okay, that's good. Now we could just import. Okay, it imported into our uh, software here, and then we could go click here, and then we go bulk check. Now, this, what this is gonna do is that it's gonna bulk check all these keywords, and it's gonna tell us the keyword difficulty for all these keywords. So we could see at a glance the, the score, what you see right here is the keyword difficulty score. Now, keyword difficulty is essentially um, how difficult it is to rank for a certain uh, keyword. The higher the number, the more difficult it is to rank for, and the lower the number, the easier it is to rank for. And this is based off a lot of metrics, mostly based off links and how optimized those pages are for those keywords. But if we look at, let's say we rank, we want to rank by volume, we can see at a glance here that this probably has the most amount of opportunity because this keyword difficulty is 17. Web design Abbotsford. Okay, apparently web design in Abbotsford is very easy to rank for and actually has good search volume. So um, might be a good place to be, you know, if you were to start up a web design business. See, you can see right here by the keyword difficulty, it's 17, which is very, very low. Um, but what we want to check out is web design, uh, web design for startups, which is right here. So this has a keyword difficulty of 37. Um, but it doesn't have any search volume, which is not ideal. So, but you know what? It's not entirely accurate because the thing is we took these search queries from Google Auto autocomplete and the autocomplete is based off what people are actually typing in on Google. So it's impossible that the search volume is actually zero if, if, it, if, if it's the case that people are actually typing in these queries. So that just means, it must mean that it's just very, very low, but it's, it, it's not actually zero. Um, it just must, it must mean that it's just very, very low. Um, so maybe we could type in something specific here. Like uh, if I look at my rank tracking, I did took a previous note about what I was trying to rank for. So like, let me just click, go here and go to the lowest ranking. So web design for startups, we can see here that this is an actually a more accurate representation of the keyword, uh, sorry, the search volume. If you use this ranking tool, the, the initial keyword research that you use in the, in the keyword research tool or keyword research section of this website is a little less accurate than this ranking uh, section. So this ranking section actually tells us that the web design for startups has 260 monthly search volume, as you can see here. This is the search volume, the volume. And right now we're not ranked for this particular search. Um, 
but it would be nice to be ranked for that. So if we just, let's see if we just uh, highlight this, click this, or copy it, go to keyword research. And now I'm gonna type in this. I'm just gonna see the keyword difficulty. So it's it has a keyword difficulty of 37. So it's not super low, but it's not super high either. So it, it has, and then here you can see the overall trend of the search volume. So you could see that in July, you had 38 people searching for this. In August, you had 32, September 36, October 46, November 25, December 1. So it fluctuates a little bit. Maybe it's, it's a seasonal thing. So you could see the search trends over time here you can see the SERP you can see um, a SERP I believe stands for search engine results page I believe um, and you could and this is actually powered by Moz as well and it's it's I'm not sure you have the Moz logo here so maybe this is kind of taken from Moz and you have page authority and domain authority is kind of a Moz metric it's it's a metric that measures how authoritative the website is so the more authoritative the page and the, and the domain is the more it's going to have ranking power in Google, but you still need to optimize the content for to decide what exactly you want that content to rank for. So what specific keywords you want it to rank for. So we're going to try to rank for web design for startups because here the volume says zero, but if you go back to uh, rank tracking, I'm just going to close Grammarly here. If you look at the rank tracking, if you scroll down here, we actually see that the search volume for web design for startups is 260. So this is the more accurate metric. So the first step I would do is actually start writing an article. So I have an article here that I wrote. And I wrote this a while ago. And this is actually written completely from scratch. I'm not using any AI um, you know, tools to spin this up or anything. I actually wrote this myself using my own knowledge. Now, Google highly rewards uh, articles that are written from scratch, even if they're not super optimized for SEO. The fact that you're writing it from scratch means that it's very authentic and it's trustworthy and it's a real, uh, it shows real credibility when you sh write an article using your own knowledge and your own experience. And that's ideally what I feel Google is trying to index in its pages. And the reason for that is because it, it would rather, I mean, just think about it. Like, would you rather read an article written by a person or written by a, a robot? You know, probably right by a person, right? And like, I mean, you could use AI to scrape articles online, but here you have an article that is written by with my own expertise, and um, this is this is great. But the thing is, when you write these articles, you're not always going to get optimal content scores. Now, that could be a little bit tricky. This particular article is very well um, has a really good content score because it was a topic that I knew very well about, but sometimes you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna write an article that you don't actually know that much about, and then you could try to use AI as a little bit of a help um, to to leverage AI to, to, to make sure that you could gather enough resources to learn about a particular topic. Because there's only so much we know, but I think it's important to to understand that SC, you know, content writing is a tool not only to share information you know about, but also to be ranked in search results and to try to gain more volume to your website. And there's different strategies you could use within content writing to to make sure you could, um, you know, um, get more volume for your website, meaning more search more visitors to your website. So let's just take this article here. Okay, so this was the article that I wrote. Now this is, I'm gonna show you that within Craft CMS, actually this, this, was my, uh, this was my title for the article. So I called it web design for startups and I just added from branding to development because if I type in branding to development, I can show you that this particular um, search phrase also has keyword, uh, keyword vo uh, volume. So branding to development, if I, if, I, if I do this and I click this, this has a keyword difficulty of 35. Of course, it's not gonna show any search volume, but um, if I go here to rank tracking, add keywords, and I'm just gonna do this very quickly, google.ca, I'm sure it has some search volume. It's impossible that it doesn't. Branding to development, Oh, 
We're just going to submit it. Not sure why it doesn't want to submit, but I'm going to try that again. Okay, now it just does a bit, a little bit of a bug. Um, let's see here. Okay, okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. We got a something, something's buggy. Okay, from branding, branding to development. Okay, so we can actually remove these because they're just duplicates. Yeah, something just, uh, some, it was just a bug in the, in the tool I was using. So actually this doesn't have any search volume and now we could know for sure that it really doesn't, uh, the search volume is very low, but it's also good to know that like, you know, if you, if you wanted to include branding to development, um, you know, it's, it's good to include that because it's, it's part of the, the topic of the article that is also that, and, um, I, th I feel it's good to include, but we could actually just remove this. Okay. So here's craft CMS. So we're going to just type web design for startups, which just does have keyword key, uh, key uh, search volume. Now, the closer to the beginning of the title that you include the, the keywords, the more dom the more prominence you're going to have within the, the title. So whatever keywords are closer to the beginning of the title have more dominance. And then the keywords near the end of the title have less dominance. So if you want you want to put your keywords at the beginning. This is why it's sometimes it's important to make sure you put even like your keywords be before your your company name because those key whatever you put near the beginning of the of the title, the H1 will rank higher will have more um weight over the the words that you put at near the end of the title. And most people may not know that. Now this is the article that we're writing. So I'm just writing this in craft CMS and this is the content management system I'm using. So if I just look at this, this is the article that we wrote. Now, basically we just take this, right? And then, and what I want to do here is I want to show you this tool. Now this is a tool called BIQ, which uh, will measure the content grading and the, and the word vector score and the fundamental score of all these articles. Now I have a very good content grading on almost all my articles. It's all A's. Um, but here, like this was written naturally, like this was not written using AI, but this is called web design startups. Like the, key, the, the target keyword is web design startups, branding development, web design for startups from branding to development. That's the title of the article this is the URL. So we have a content grading of A, a word vector score of 66 and a fundamental score of 40. And if we click on this, we can look at it and we can optimize, start optimizing this article based on like adding in some of these keywords here. So we can see like, okay, so if we want to add these suggested keywords, we can start adding this further into the article and optimizing the article. But let's say your content grading wasn't an A, okay? Let's say it was a C or a D or whatever it might be, or maybe an E even, it might even be an E, okay? If that's, if that's the case, uh, what you could do is you could use a, a little bit of AI assistance, okay? So this is an AI assistant tool. I'm just gonna log in to show you what I mean. Now, this is just supposed to help you. It's not supposed to write all the article for you. And I don't recommend that you use this tool to write the entire article for you because it's very important to um, have authority over your subject and to not rely on AI, but this could definitely assist in the process if you would like. I think those are all the palm trees, right? So I was using this AI tool to, to, to help me assist in creating content. And as you can see, the, the, it's all green here. So when it's green, it means that it's, uh, it has a high score of, of content grading. So it's, it has very high uh, content grading. So ideally what you want to do, if you were writing like an article for web design startups, you would just put in the keywords, right? So you would say like, um, this is a content to keyword map. So if we're just looking at this, this is a lot to explain in one video, but um, let's say, let's say the um, web design 
just looking here. So this, these are the keywords. So web design startups. Okay, so if I go back to here, I'm just gonna add the first keyword. And you wanna remove stop words. So web design for startups, the word for is a stop word. You wanna remove that. So branding development would be another keyword. That's fine. And you wanna make the, the word count as low as possible. You don't, I, I would not recommend the suggested word count here. I would make it as low as possible so that you could write more authentic content and not rely on AI to, to write this for you. But I would, I would recommend using 1500 to 2500 words. And if you use these keywords, what you can do is you could start creating an outline. So if you have these words, um, the lowest count possible, and this, what this is going to do is that it's going to try to cover the subject matter as much as possible with the lo lowest word count. Okay, so less fluff and more substance. And you can start creating the document. Now, the article I wrote, I wrote myself, but I'm just showing you what AI can do to, to help you out if you, need, if you need their help. I'm saying like there as in like, they're an entity, but it's it's just, I think the world may change with AI. It's uh, as a side note, I, I think it's gonna change a lot of things. Um, it's gonna revolutionize the way we live, I think. So it's just, uh, this takes a little while to, uh, to, um, to uh, process. So I'm just gonna go wait a little bit. Maybe I could edit this video if it takes a bit too long, but uh, it usually shouldn't take too long. It's just it's just creating a, an outline. It seems like it's taking a little bit longer today. I'm not sure why. So we could start, we could just remove this. We could, uh, so I could talk about the content to keyword map. So basically what this is, is that you want to have a target audience of, uh, who you're targeting the article to your seed keyword, meaning like a seed keyword is like your, 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 your main keyword. Then you want to expand it to a long tail keyword, meaning like the keywords that have more um, keyword like more a, a, a longer phrase for a keyword meaning like you get the more specific the keyword is the more specific the search um, intent is or the not the intent but the search query is the more chances you have to potentially rank for it because you're getting into specific territory and the more specific you are the, the easier it is to rank for so this is a long tail keyword. Now you want your article for your blog to be relevant to the substance of the article, but also to your long tail keyword. So there's a balance there. Then you want to create a, a, a page on your website, the URL that 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 creates an article for your blog that relates to your long tail and, and keywords and your title. And then you can start measuring all these metrics, right? You can start measuring the content grading you can start measuring the content grading, the word vector score, the font score, the word count, the search volume, the SEO difficulty that it is, the external links that are pointing to it. And the more links you po you point to your articles, the higher they're gonna be ranked for. You can also measure your, your ranking on Google as to where your articles stand. You can give a custom importance, importance metric. So how important it is to make these changes to whatever particular article that you're doing. You could have an X for a done, which I, I tend to, to do myself. And here at the end here, you could just say tasks, like what tasks do we need to do? Do we need to optimize the content or add more backlinks or which, where do we want to point the backlinks to which, to which specific articles? And then you could use a spreadsheet like this to start monitoring your process, right? So now I believe the AI article has been written, um, the outline has been uh, set up. So this is basically the AI tool that is, is used to, and this is a called search graph. Now this is, this is um, an, an AI a content creation uh, tool. 
and um, you could actually start um, creating an outline of what you want your topic to be. You could add other parts of it in here as well, but usually the default is pretty good because this will cover the, the, the like we'll, we'll co have coverage over the topic. And if you continue, you could just say like, okay, I want it to be the lowest word count possible. You could talk about talking points, questions, keywords. Now you could add also contextual keywords. So you could do things like this, but I, I'm, I'm gonna show you quickly how this works. So I'm just gonna generate the outline. This is gonna take a little while. So we can go back to the content to keyword map. Um, so basically here what I'm doing is like, basically the goal is I have a target keyword, like keywords that I wanna rank for. So a phrase that I'm type that someone would type into Google, okay, or, or a relevant phrase. Then I have a, a article on my blog and the title of the article that relates to what the person is typing in on Google. And then I have a page on my website that is targeting those keywords and is, has the title of the article that is relevant to those keywords and relevant to the substance of the article. And here are like these other metrics like content grading, word vector score, fundamental score. These are metrics you could use to measure how effective the on-page SEO is. And then you could also measure the word, the search volume and the, the actual, what really matters in the end is your Google ranking based on how, um, what type of uh, keywords you're, 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 you're ranking for. And essentially what you want to do in the end is like, if, you, if you're doing this for a client, essentially, what I would recommend doing is like, I would recommend go, do, doing all of the work here, like all the work that is necessary to, to rank for these keywords, put it as a ranking from top to bottom with actual search volume here, go export, export to PDF, call it, you know, something like Skylight Designs Keyword um, I don't know, search. I'm not sure what I, what I want to call it. Keyword, uh, keyword search. I'm not sure what I want to call it, but just download. And then here, this is what you give to your client. You give them very simply um, the, the keywords that people are typing in on Google, where you're ranked for those keywords and how many people are visiting or, or how many people are searching for those keywords per month. You give this to your client, they'll love you because like they'll, you do all the, all the work for them and then this is what they see and they don't need to necessarily, like they don't need to, to see the entire process but if, the, if you show them the results of what you're doing, you'll be like, okay, great, it's working. And that's it, you know, like it's very, it's actually not that complicated to get this going, but it just takes time and effort. But this is what you want to hand to your client, something very tangible and concrete where they could see proof that the SEO is actually working. I don't like these audits that just are very vague and a bit misleading because it, it may kind of makes SEO look bad, you know, in my view. So anyway, this is the, uh, outline of the article that you could write for using AI. So I'm just going back and forth with this. You could add, start adding keywords to the different sections. So you notice here you have contextual term keywords that you could add here. You can start like clicking on the individual sections like here and add other contextual terms. So like usually you want to add your keywords at the, at the beginning and the end of the article, but you could start adding other keywords here. I'm actually not going to, um, publish this article on my website from this AI tool because I already have a fairly good um, article written. But the thing what I can do is um, I can just show you that I just want to add to section if I wanted to, then these keywords get added. If I go back here, I can just say, I can choose the tone of the article that I would like to write, which is really great. Uh, I usually like to pick like salesperson or radio host or or uh, perhaps a uh, researcher. Uh, but I like, if it's something that I'm usually trying to promote, I would usually go with salesperson. And then here, like I could adjust the creativity. So make it a little bit more creative, make it like a little bit of a ninth or 10th grade reading level. I mean, really it's gonna be more than that because the AI doesn't actually write in the most elegant way. So then I still use Grammarly to kind of correct the writing of the AI. But here you can basically start start writing and then like the, the, the AI is gonna spin out some content. 
and it's going to take a little while and it's going to um, you'll see that the the topic coverage will always usually be 100% which is great because the thing about topic coverage is that the more you talk about a particular topic um or the, not the more you talk about it but the, the amount of coverage you have on a particular topic um the better um that topic will will rank and notice you see that here we have adequate so that the the um, the level of this content is, is adequate by default that's what you get um but you could also like make optimize it a little bit further so you could go seo if you want to auto optimize you could do that it's going to auto optimize certain things you know it's going to add contextual keywords it's going to it's going to um it's going to make sure that like some of the uh It's just going to add a few more keywords into the article and like do a few things to enhance it um, for SEO purposes where we could get the score a little bit higher. Instead of adequate, we're going to get probably around maybe 60. But ideally, you want to reach around 70% at, at the minimum. Um, and then what you do, once this is all well and done... I know this video is getting a bit long. Um, I'm going to try to keep it brief because there's a lot to cover. Um, I mean, ideally, what you would want to do after that is you would open up Grammarly. You'll go to a new document. You would copy the... Um, oh, this is going to just take a little sec. Um, you would copy the article here and then you would run it through Grammarly to make sure that the, the writing is, is good. So like any sort of like um, autocomplete suggestions, you know, Grammarly can take care of. You want to make sure it does that. And then what you want to make sure you do is you want to proofread the article after this where you want to make sure that all the information is accurate because sometimes the AI uh, will not actually put 100% accurate information so you want to make sure that you're writing articles that you're aware of um, and then make sure that the actual information is correct because not like that that will help your SEO and it also, it's also the right thing to do. So just make sure that the information is accurate. Um, that's all I would like to say. Uh, notice now the, 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 uh, the score got a little bit higher here, which is good. Um, we have keyword density. We could also make sure, like, if you want to do, if you want to, um, um, I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh yeah, here, okay, so when it's auto-optimized, so you could add contextual terms, you wanna accept all to make sure you added contextual terms when you auto-optimize it. And then here you wanna make sure that you add decorations, you could accept that too. So you could add decorations. And then here when you exit view, you'll notice that your score now is 69%, so it's very close to 70 um, because we, add, we optimize the writing a little bit, quite a bit. So what you could do now is you could copy all of this, copy it, put into Grammarly. So you're getting AI to fix the, the, what the, you'll get one AI to fix the problems that the other AI didn't do. It's crazy what we're doing now. So anyway, um, domain, general, intent, you can make sure that your intent is, uh, to convince, I guess, um, audience would be knowledgeable, formality, neutral, um, done. That's fine. Notice that there's a lot of um, grammatical uh, mistakes. There's actually 16 of them. So you want to make sure you accept all 16 grammatical mi uh, mistakes, correct them all. It looks good. Um, you could actually look through anything else if you want to correct it. Now, once you have this, I would highly recommend copying this and just putting, like if you want to take the next step and really make sure that this is well written, this is optional. I mean, if you really want to make sure your content is really top-notch, you could run it through Hemingway. 
And Hemingway is a copywriter app that allows you to, to make sure your writing is very readable. So now you'll notice that like the writing here that, that was spun out by the AI tool is not very readable. So it has a grade of 13, but you want to aim for a grade of nine. So if you want to reword some of these sentences to make them more readable and to make it flow a little bit easier, then you could do that. But that requires manual effort. And like it, depending on your how much time you have to spend on content writing, you may or may not want to do this. But if you really pride yourself on like high quality content and you want to create that authenticity where you're really you know making sure that like you really readers are actually reading your articles and you want to make sure that they have a good experience while reading your articles you can make them very friendly to read so you can make you can optimize the sentences to make sure that they're um they're uh, easy to read you know and like break down the long lengthy sen sentences but even if you don't do that even if you just leave it as is and you just copy everything and you let's say now I'm not I'm not going to uh, save this but this is let's this was the initial article that I wrote right this was this was the initial article that I wrote called web design startups branding development this was written from scratch right I have a constant grading of a my analysis is readability is a B which is very good fundamental scores 40 word vector scores 66 if i were to actually copy everything that the ai did and not bother writing the article myself i could show you the difference right you would you would think it would be not that great but by the way there's there's ways where you could um make sure you get rid of some of these spacing there's, there's ways you can do that actually let me let me show you how to do that while while we have this video because i want to show you that um there's a workflow you could use if you if you plan on using this where you can get rid of some of these space some of the spacing. So uh, if I go to Grammarly here, what I would do is I'd copy this, I would put it into uh, Hemingway, I believe. So I'll put it into here. So notice how the spacing is nice now. We got rid of a lot of this, the spacing. It's not perfect, but you get the idea that it did improve it a little bit. If you want to make sure that you could export it, you could export it as an HTML uh, document. This is the workflow I, I use if I'm, if I'm writing with AI. You have an HTML document. You can go in here. Okay. Remove the um, beginning of the body text. Go down here. I'm just going to scroll all the way down. Okay, that's fine. Make sure I remove this. Now I want to do a search and replace. So for all the strong tags, and I'm just going to uh, do this. I'm going to replace all of these with M because in typography, it's better to, like we're actually going to talk about typography now. It's um, it's better to um, hold on a sec. I had this backwards. Should should do the M. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna remove that. Put here. So I'm basically changing all the strong tags to an emphasis tag. And basically that reads better with typography because rather than having all these bold uh, words, which I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, it's I learned through typography that it's better to use italics to emphasize things rather than using bold. So if I just copy everything here, now I just could use the code itself to copy it, put in the code right here. This is based on CraftCMS, which is great. Now you notice that now you notice that all the, all the spacing is gone. So you don't have to actually manually adjust the spacing. You could just edit that with a, bit, a little bit of uh, editing some code. You got the spacing all figured out. Um, you can actually make sure that like, you notice how there's one, 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 one. Okay, so if you want to change this, you would just go here, make sure that this is a list, put it as a, put it as an ordered list. There you go. So now, now it's actually ordered properly. So you could just do that. Put it ordered list. Try to try that again. So you have to you have to edit it a little bit, right? 
do that. Now this is, keep in mind, this is what the AI wrote. I, I didn't write this, right? But I'm just comparing basically my the quality of my own content with the AI's content. So if I just save it temporarily, okay? So we have this, uh, web design development. Okay, so we had, if I did just take a screenshot, well, we could remember that it was a, a but I'll just take a screenshot just to show you. I'll take a screenshot of this to compare it. Now, if I go back and I go to my website, I was always, I was always uh, joking around saying like, if you're, if you literally, if you, if you literally have 20 tabs open, you know, you're a developer. It's uh, one of those things. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go to Where is it? Here. Okay, I'm gonna click on this, copy the URL, put it here, put the same keywords. So I'm going to compare the content grading of my own article based on the AI's article. And you'll notice that the AI will actually do a fairly good job of creating good con quality content. If you really want the best of both worlds, I would recommend combining both your content with the AI's content. So if your content is not getting a content grading of an A, if it's let's say lower than that, Get a little bit of AI content in there and bump it up to an A. And ideally, you would want as much of your own content as possible. But if you could leverage a little bit of the AI to, to give you a higher ranking in content analysis, then, you know, all, all the power to you, right? So we're just going to see the the, the the analysis of how well the AI wrote the content. You'll notice that here, it's a lot, a lot of this is optimized. But the actual readability will probably be lower. I can probably guarantee you that the readability will be lower because the sentences are very long and there's, there's a lot of edits. And you could also manually edit this and add keywords. Keep in mind, you could always add these keywords manually. Um, it's just, uh, okay, so the readability, if we took a screenshot of, the, of, our, of our readability here, this was our original article. So our original article had a readability of B, well, whereas the AI had a readability of a C. Our word fundamental score was 40, but the AI had a fundamental score of 49. So it's a bit higher, right? Our word vector score was 66. The AI was 45. So we actually outperformed the AI a little bit on readability and on word vector, but the AI outperformed us on the fundamental score. So that's... You could also use the, the power of, of both uh, you and the AI to come up with good content. Now we're still waiting for the content grading. It's still measuring it. And once we get the content grading, we're gonna end the, end the video soon. Um, Cause I know it's been a bit long. I'm not sure why it's taking so long, but anyway. Um, I'm actually going to, um, so I actually, I, I always would prefer to, uh, rely on my own writing. Um, so I'm going to change this, revert it back to the original, but, um, I think if we go back here. Okay, so the content grading is an A. So the AI had a content grading of an A, which is good, but it had different other metrics in the analysis of the content. So if you go back, this is a side-by-side -side comparison. Both content grading had an A, so you could use the AI to improve the content grading, but then the word vector score and the fundamental score, you could tweak that based on your own keyword relevancy and your own, how many keywords you add into the content. Uh, the word vector score, I find it's easier to get higher when you write the content. Whereas the fundamental score, I find it's easier when the AI writes the content. So you could use the power of both to try to get this as high as possible.
So that's as, that's for, as far as on-page SEO is concerned. So like we're going to go back here. We can start measuring all of this. And the result of this in the end, finally, is that what you really want in the end is you want this, where you want you want to be able to rank for certain search queries, right, with search volume. And also what you could do is increase, add backlinks to those articles. Um, if we actually look on Google, like forget all these tabs, we're just going to go on Google now. And I'm going to, just going to close all this. If you type in WordPress, Ottawa, you'll notice that this is uh, this is quite hard to rank for because there's a lot of competition in Ottawa. But if you use these tools to like even increase the, the on-page SEO of your services pages, let's say, like this is me. I'm on the second page of Google for WordPress Ottawa right underneath Indeed. And even Indeed is on the second page. So you can see how hard it is to rank for it. And if you look at WordPress Web Developer Ottawa, you can see that this particular page, oh great, I'm gonna have to log in again. Bear with me, please. Okay. If you just look at the services page um, for WordPress Developer Ottawa, you can see that, maybe I could look at, Um, I'm just trying to find where it is. Um, yeah, right here, I believe. Yeah, this is where it is. So you can see that this was, this is actually my services page for WordPress Developer Ottawa, you can see that all the writing has been optimized, most of it has been optimized, but not overly optimized, but it has been fairly optimized with certain keywords. You can see the keywords highlighted in yellow. So based on the keywords at the beginning of the, of the page, you can see that these are my keywords highlighted in yellow. So this is optimizing for keywords, as you can see here. And if you look at the analysis, my readability is a B, my word vector score is 47. Oh, sorry, sorry, my word vector score is 55. My fundamental score is 47. My content and uh, grading is actually an A. If I go back here, you'll see that it's an A. Um, WordPress developer. Yeah, right here. Yeah, see how it's WordPress web design, WordPress sorry, web design and WordPress web development in Ottawa. The content grading is an A. So you could actually use this tool to increase your search visibility by making sure your on-page SEO is effective. All right, um, thank you so much for watching this entire video. If you have made it to the end, you're a beast. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope this helped a little bit. Um, this is kind of my pro well, this is what you could use as a process to, to learn about on page SEO, to help you rank in uh, Google. Um, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to this, you could really spend more time in, uh, optimizing the keywords really uh, vigorously. And, uh, it's good to write natural content, um, rely less on AI and, and do it more yourself, um, as much as possible. Use your own knowledge. And that's what Google wants. That's what most search engines want. And uh, all the best to you. And let me know uh, how you succeed. All right. Cheers.